but yeah, take it away. Oh, it is working. Okay, that's the thing. Down is forward, yes? <laughs> I guess I'll find out. Hello, welcome to, uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time, in many ways. How players conceptualize choice in open world games. This is uh, a little bit of a bold say to say this is how. I'm still very preliminary, so what we're going to do is have a little bit of a journey down. What do I know so far? And then we can actually, if you want to, talk about it afterwards and tell me what your thoughts think is going on. Because boy howdy, do I have some data for you today. <laughs> so, today's talk. Questioning the simple questions. Um, I'm one of those people that keeps going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> And you can't stop me, and I'll keep going, and it drives my chat numbers crazy. Uh, but you know, I think that's what part of the fun part of research is. So today, we're taking this concept of choice, and what we're really going to do is really dig into what are we actually talking about here. And I have more questions than answers, <laughs> so I'm going to preface that now. That I'm going to talk you through things that I think are really interesting, uh, and then we're going to work out whether what I've actually found so far, and maybe we'll find some interesting insights about what people do. Which is actually part, what it is is an exploration of decision making in Skyrim, because Skyrim is my favorite game. Okay? And it's an open world, so that always helps. And what I mean by that, I mean it's basically what I'm interested in. There's what what people do in these games, which is very vast. There's so much that they can do, but also what they remember doing. Because as anyone who's ever tried to interview anyone on anything, what they say they do is not the same as what they do. But I think that's really interesting. So I'm interested in looking at what is the difference going on here, and what can we learn by looking at the difference between those two things. But first, some background. Why should you study choice in open world games? Well, what are open world games? Uh, people who know me well know that this is an entire separate talk and a paper, so I'm not going to go into detail. But I will give you the word soup, which is, this is my very fancy definition that I like to bust out at fun times. Essentially, you could summarize that as, players do what they want when they want. But the fancy way of saying that would be that players are basically in a world that's really large, it's connected, they can walk across it. Uh, the main goal of whatever the game is saying they have to do doesn't actually restrict them from what they're doing. They can do whatever they like, otherwise, any activity they want. They can self-pace it. If they think it's too much, they can stop. If it's too little, they can pick up the pace. So that's what I'm talking about. And the games that sort of fall into this category for me is more the single-player version of this, not trying to look at the complex <laughs> social nature of games. So Skyrim is my main focus. But this also applies to the Breath of the Wild uh, and the Witcher uh, Wild Hunt. So what is choice in open world games? Now, this is where it gets interesting. Because it's one of those things where we go, oh yeah, people, people do things. But what level of choice are we actually talking about? Um, because if you think about it, there's a lot of ways that I make choices. I'm, I'm standing here in front of you today. Uh, I'm standing, I'm walking around, but I'm also talking. Okay, am I talking about, am I, do I know what I want to say when I'm talking? There's a lot of things. Is it the words that I'm saying that I'm choosing? Is it the sentences that I'm choosing? Is it the, the goal of what I'm trying to communicate to you? These are all choice, but what are we actually saying about, especially in gameplay, what does this actually limp to? Is it what I'm actually doing on the keyboard? Is it what I'm doing in sort of moving through the world? Or is it something to do with like what I'm trying to achieve? I try to unpack that. So, in another way as well, especially with the games, how much of that is actually me versus me reacting to the game? Because obviously a lot of the times, especially in open worlds, things will come at you very quickly <laughs> and you have to respond. So within that, I was interested to see, okay, is that also considered a choice? Or is that something that I'm just saying, this is just an interaction that I'm having to deal with and how much sort of agency do you take to that choice? So basically this applies me to my question is, what do players mean by choice? Because we could say a lot of things about what we think is going on, but how are they conceptualizing it? And then basing off that, what did people choose to do? Which is great. So this is my latest study. It's hot off the press, I'm still working on it. <laughs> but essentially I asked the 15 experienced players in Skyrim uh, to basically just sit down for 30 minutes, their own PC, anything they wanted to do, any mod, any game save, anywhere they wanted to go, and just have fun while I sat there on Zoom and watched it, which was the best study I've ever designed. <laughs> And essentially afterwards I'd ask them, okay, so just walk me through, in the past half an hour, what, did, what happened? No details, too small, just let me know what's going on. And also ask them afterwards to sort of probe a little bit more about, okay, why did they do what they did? And then I basically, what I can do, because I've got um, Zoom at this time, is I can actually see what their gameplay was. So without having to rely on just what they're saying, I actually can look at what they did, which is very cool. Because this is my current idea. How people respond to what did you do actually tells us a lot of their priorities about what this means. Because this is a very simple question on its surface. It's four words. They're very small words. But you can unpack this. Because what does what mean? Am I talking about my goals with you? Am I talking about the actions that I'm doing? Is it the mouse clicks? What level have I decided needs to be communicated in the what? Who is I? Who is you? Who is anyone? <laughs> Again, one of those ones, yeah, yeah, I know who I am. Do we? Do we know? Don't go down to that too far. 
<laughs> in this context, this could just be what is it me versus the character? How do I actually internalize that? Do I say my character did this? Do I say I did this? Is there something there? But also, this is, is this me or the game? Am I doing this, or is the game doing something that I'm responding to? So sort of checking into that as well. And then also, it's a question. Who's asking this question? Uh, my players knew that I was a researcher. They knew that I was experienced also in Skyrim. This does tend to change how people talk to you, because they go, oh, I know what you know. So what do I think you know, and what do I think you want to know from me? So it's a very social construction for the linguists in the room. <laughs> we know that this is an absolute nightmare to to navigate, because what they know isn't all the thing that they'll tell you, but it does prioritize what they want to tell you, which is very fun. So I like to lean into this, even though it seems like a problem. And basically, I'm using this as a proxy for saying this is what players think is meaningful in their gameplay. Well, how they respond to this is basically the priority they give for everything that they do, and we'll use that to work out what choice means. Oh gosh, so much data. So data processing for this, as you can imagine, is quite a lot. These are recorded interviews, uh, which are anything from half an hour to an hour long, uh, over Zoom, and then plus the gameplay. So then I had to transcribe these interviews and then do my little content analysis. But then also, every second of gameplay had to be coded for what people were doing. There's a lot of seconds in 30 minutes times 15. <laughs> Me and Excel, as people know from my workshop this morning, were best friends. So I did basically what people were doing is their action. What would this, were they reported the thing they were doing this action for? And then the means is kind of borrowing this from a psychology theory that this is kind of a middle ground of like, how do you put this goal into effect? So essentially this is, okay, I'm walking down the road, that's my actual action, uh, I'm doing this because the means of which I'm trying to do this is I'm traveling to town, because the goal is I'm making a quest. So they're quite little um, sort of nested inside of each other. So today's focus is that's a lot there, so I'm basically I'm just gonna talk about what people said they did, uh, and then basically comparing this to what they actually did, and then only specifically focusing just on goals and actions to simplify things, because that would be <laughs> even more work if I thought about the middle ground. So what did people do in Skyrim? Let's start with actions. Does anyone want to guess what the most common thing is people do in open board games? Walk. Walk. <laughs> this took me 50 hours. <laughs> it's 50 hours plus if they tell you, yep, people, they love moving around. I love research. It's very fun. People move around. People go, ooh, shiny, what's that thing over there? Why is that giant T posing down the road? I'm interacting with things, I'm looking at chests, I'm looting and picking up stuff, I'm fighting things, all sort of the way down. So these are 15 actions I sort of categorized. They go into these sort of five meta codes, so I'm moving, I'm looking at things, interacting with things, fighting things and loading. Loading is either you've died, or you're moving in between separate areas. So any time sort of you go into the blank screen. Well, that works, that's quite nice, isn't it? This is 80% of actions, actually, so <laughs> probably because the movement is so massive, there's a lot of moving around. Well, that's quite cool. Players like to move, they look at things and they interact. That's the three-way summary of an open world game. But how about the goals? We're going to put that instead. There are 14 types of goals again, as I've sort of found. Now this is more interesting, a little bit more of an interesting spread. Side questing is very big, as we know people like to do other stuff. But they're also doing sort of main quests a little bit further down, also exploring, still looking at stuff, and then being interrupted by things. This is when you're walking down the road, and then the guy just starts attacking you for no reason. You're like, all right, cool, that's the interruption. So these go into these sort of five things again. So we've got the quest scene, we've got exploring, ooh, shiny things. Uh, Miss Lesson's quest is here, so these are like the sleeping, shopping, collecting flowers. Revenge, that's a fantastic one. That's a, I just died and I don't like that. So I'm going to go back around and I'm going to kill you. Uh, and then the interruptions again of things coming in your way. So people like quests and exploring. That's nice, nice, isn't it? So what do they remember doing? As there's a fun memory test to liven up any interview, is that if you don't tell them you're going to do this, you can see the mild panic in some of their faces. They're like, oh no, I had to be paying attention to what I was doing. We can start with goals, so we're moving on from that. The most common goal that people remembered was load game. Now, why is load game interesting? Um, I died. <laughs> that's the most interesting thing. Ah, so something killed me. Okay, well, that's cool. And then there's a little bit of a game sort of side quest in there. And then you're being interrupted again, so that thing tried to kill me. Then a bit of a explore down. So they talk about things that interrupted them and the quests that they followed, which is kind of cool. But this is the cost different to what they said they were doing, but afterwards we actually know what they did, was that they were doing a lot of side quests and exploring, and the things that, you know, catching their attention in main quests, but they most remember dying. <laughs> so already we're noticing a difference in priority depending on how often something happens is not related to how much people want to talk to you about it. So that's quite interesting. Actions again, as you can imagine, uh, a lot of loading games, entering things, fighting things, uh, waiting around, interestingly, <laughs> finding locations, these sort of things. Um, so people like to talk about dying, entering, fighting. But again, this is also quite different to what happens. There's actually no overlap in the top four things that happens here at the action level. 
Now this is really cool, actually, isn't it? Because obviously movement happens a lot. No one wants to talk about movement. But also, <laughs> interacting in loot, I think, was fascinating. I probed a lot of people about this. So I'm like, hello, why? You've just looted this body, and you've done it, like, 20 times. And like, why didn't, why didn't you say, this is, you know, what did you do? Why didn't you do this? And then they look at me, and they go, that's just what you do in Skyrim. I'm like, I just asked you that. <laughs> is that not what I wanted? But no, there's a difference between that's what you do in a game versus what I did in this game. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Would you ever feel like something's missing? That was a lot of research that I just did in 50 hours of mining, and I've, I've given you four interesting facts. What can averages actually tell us about an experience? I've told you that players like to talk about their interruptions and they, they move around a lot. But an experience is a continuous thing, and it's contextual. We were actually reducing everything to one number, it's actually not that interesting. The beauty is actually how things unfold over an experience. I would say this is like summarizing the, like <laughs> the Animal Crossing New Horizons theme by the number of notes that it has. This doesn't tell me anything about how it makes me feel, the memories that are attached to it, or how, how good I think it is as a song. It's 154, by the way. <laughs> so I want to sort of like give you a little bit, <laughs> a little thing of what is possible here. So what does individual player data look like? Oh lord, it's a lot of numbers. Rows and rows and rows of numbers because there's 1,800 seconds to 30 minutes. This is kind of what my data looks like, and it goes on for the rest of the time. So essentially we have the timestamp, we have actions, we have the action type, we've got means, we've got goals, goal type, memory, which is just a binary yes, no, did they talk to me about it and everything afterwards, and the rolling average is basically just over a 60 seconds window downwards, how much of that is out of, you know, 100% basically. But having this data is really cool, because you can do a lot of cool stuff to it. Because we can look at what people talk about. That's quite cool, there's only one person, but we can see oh, this person remembered quite a lot of what they were doing. But there's some interesting gaps here. Okay, so what happened here, we actually don't know. But we'd also got to overlay this with the actions that they were going to be doing on the same sort of binary yes no, and we kind of see this little pattern. I call this a barcode analysis, patent pending. I don't know how there's something here. We could maybe compare this between people. But even cooler, what have I talked about those rolling averages? Look at that. Wow. What is going on here? Why is, why, why is this happening? There's nothing here. If you're a classic psychologist, you'd say, okay, there's a sort of peak end effect stuff. People remember the beginning, people remember the end. But that doesn't really explain the little peaks in the middle here, there's something, something, some things are much more interesting to talk to me about in that social context versus not. So maybe we could lay over where their goals happened there, so we can go, okay, so they still, they seem to be on, they do seem to fall into a sort of a goal pattern here. But we can go even further, because we can get like Christmas, and we can keep going. Okay, so they're doing a lot of this quest here, they're doing a lot of on focus here, but there's some interruptions that are very interesting to talk to me about. But there's still these gaps in here that they're not saying. Now that's interesting, so we could say maybe these are the parts that are just, they're not interesting to say, but why are they saying that? What if we go even further? And this is where I get to my really exploratory stuff. If you then looked at what people were doing on their goal level and then treat those as when people change between goals, what if you could find their goal loops? I call them loops. <laughs> we can see how people change between goals. The arrows are the fitness, depends on how see how much it happens. But then, how much did they remember saying? Oh no, <laughs> not much at all. So this would say this is the priority of what happened. This person clearly felt that their gameplay was I was doing something and something stopped me. And that was how I felt. The possibilities are endless, uh, not for this talk, because I see Dan is wiggling at me. The same division I'd say Skyrim players do a lot of things. That's quite fun. They talk about their interruptions and their questing. But these aren't always easy to link to their actions because there's so many actions related to their goals. It's not a clean, like, oh, because they're doing this, they're clearly doing this. It's very, very complex. And there's a lot to explore on an individual level. Now, before I go, and with permission from Dan, because I told him about it, this is my last year of video. But none of this would be possible without the people I met. So I wanted to say hello, but I wanted to thank you to you. But as I was reflecting on that, I realized that this topic is actually quite similar to my PhD in other ways. And on top of that, it also relates to my favorite show, which I get to subject you to, Babylon 5, to all of the retro sci-fi nerds. Specifically because there's a point in season one. When Jakar asks Kathleen, he's having a conversation, he goes, okay, you just saved my life. You went out of your way to save me. You had nothing to gain from this. There was nothing here for you. Why did you save my life? And he replies, Nans, humans, Centauri. We all do what we do for the same reason. Because it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs>